Welcome to another episode of the Taxverse Podcast Experience from Crosslink Professional Tax Solutions. I'm your host, Zach Kreitz, of the podcast that helps tax businesses and entrepreneurs grow their community, generate more revenue, and expand their knowledge. Have you ever been associated with a tax scam or received a notification that you weren't sure if it was real or not? According to the IRS, thousands of people have lost millions of dollars and their personal information to tax schemes. And in today's episode, I will be discussing some of this year's most common scams. Are you looking for a professional tax preparation solution that provides multiple revenue streams for your business? Crosslink's suite of products offers its customers a variety of options to be successful this tax season. Whether you prefer a desktop solution for your business or an online solution for a more mobile approach, Crosslink has you covered. Contact us today to find out all the ways we can help you generate more revenue this tax season. Now, let's get into the episode. Each year, the IRS compiles a list of 12 common scams called the Dirty Dozen. These scams can be encountered at any time, but many of these scams peak during the height of the filing season. There are many misconceptions out there about the IRS and how and when they will contact you. According to irs.gov, the IRS initiates most contacts through regular mail delivered by the United States Postal Office. However, there are circumstances in which the IRS will call or come to a home or business. These include when a taxpayer has an overdue tax bill, a delinquent tax return, or has not made an employment tax deposit. An IRS employee may also view assets or tour a business as part of the collection investigation, an audit, or an ongoing criminal investigation. Even then, taxpayers will generally first receive several notices from the IRS in the mail. Mail can be one way scammers try to attack you. But for our first scam, I would like to discuss watching out for scammers using email and text messaging. I can probably open up my phone today and point out a couple of suspicious text messages that I've received in the past. Hopefully, I've deleted them all. But we all probably experience a sus text message or two. According to IRS Commissioner Danny Werfel, email and text scams are relentless, and scammers frequently use tax season as a way of tricking people. With people anxious to receive the latest information about a refund or other tax issues, scammers will regularly pose as the IRS, a state agency, or others in the tax industry in emails and texts. These messages arrive in the form of unsolicited text or email to lure unsuspecting victims to provide valuable personal and financial information that can lead to identity theft. The two main types are phishing and spishing. Phishing is an email sent by fraudsters claiming to come from the IRS or another illegitimate organization, including state organizations or a financial firm. The email lures the victims into the scam by a variety of tricks such as enticing victims with a phony tax refund or frightening them with false legal or criminal charges for tax fraud. Smishing is a text message that uses the same technique as phishing. Scammers often use alarming language like your account has now been put on hold or unusual activity report with a bogus solutions link to restore the account. Again, the IRS initiates most contacts through regular mail and will never initiate contact with taxpayers by email, text, or social media regarding a bill or tax refund. Individuals should never respond to tax-related phishing or smishing or click on the URL and link. Instead, the scam should be reported by sending the email or a copy of the text as an attachment to phishing at irs.gov, along with the caller ID, date, time, and the number that received the message. Moving along to our second scam to look out for this year. Over the last couple of years, the IRS has done a great job improving the IRS online account, and with these updates comes a large interest in accessing these new accounts from scammers. If you are someone interested in creating an IRS online account, you can go over to our website at crosslinktax.com and click on our customer resources tab to read our latest article on the advantages of creating an IRS online account. I will also leave a link in the show notes. 
Back to the episode. The IRS online account provides valuable tax information for people, but this information in the wrong hands can provide the information needed to submit a fraudulent return in a person's name in hopes of collecting a refund. People should be on the lookout for these types of scam artists offering to help set up these accounts. Scammers are trying to convince people they need help setting up an account, but in reality, these accounts do not need any help at all with setting up. In this scam targeting individuals, scammers will pose as a helpful third party and offer to help create taxpayers' online accounts at irs.gov. These scammers often ask for taxpayers' personal information, including address, social security number, or photo identification. The criminal then will either sell the valuable information to others or use the sensitive information to file fraudulent returns, obtain loans, or even open credit accounts. The only place individuals should go to create an IRS online account is irs.gov. People should not use third-party assistance other than the approved IRS authentication process through irs.gov. Our last and final scam that I will be discussing in today's episode is a similar tactic as the previous, but instead of using the IRS online account as a tool, scammers will use a so-called offer and compromise mill. This mill misleads taxpayers into believing that they can settle a tax debt. The IRS has identified many instances in heavily advertised promises offering to settle taxpayer debt at steep discounts, but then taxpayers do not meet technical requirements for the offer, thus facing excessive fees from promoters. Actually, the IRS provides a free tool where taxpayers can check their eligibility to pre-qualify for an offer in compromise. I will also leave this in the show notes. The IRS commissioner, Danny Werfel, said, quote, that too often we see some unscrupulous promoters mislead taxpayers into thinking they can magically get rid of tax debt. This is a legitimate IRS program, but there are specific requirements for people to qualify. An offer in compromise, or OIC, is when the taxpayer works with the IRS to settle a tax debt for less than the full amount owed. It is an option for those unable to pay the full tax liability or if doing so creates a financial hardship. The IRS takes into consideration each unique set of facts and circumstances. This agreement can happen directly between the taxpayer and the IRS without a third party. An offer and compromise mill will usually make outlandish claims frequently in radio and TV ads about how they can settle a person's tax debt for cheap. In reality, the promoter fees are often excessive and taxpayers pay the mill to get the same deal that they could have received on their own by working directly with the IRS. Promoters know that not every taxpayer will qualify for an OIC and knowingly advise indebted taxpayers to file an OIC application knowing they will not qualify and costing taxpayers money and also time. As I stated prior, the IRS conducts a dirty dozen list annually and as a part of this effort encourages people to report individuals who promote improper and abusive tax schemes. To report an abusive tax scheme, people should mail or fax a completed form 14242, report suspected abusive tax promotions or preparers, and any supporting materials to the IRS Lead Development Center in the Office of Promoter Investigations. Well, I hope this episode was beneficial to you. And if it was, please leave us a five-star review so that we can continue to deliver content. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Taxverse podcast experience. I'm the host, Zach Kreitz, and I'll catch you on the next one.